cute little scene over here represents Haemophilus influenza. Two cute little red characters who are shaped like an oval or a coxobacillus, as Haemophilus influenza is a coxobacillus, and they were red to remind us that Haemophilus influenza is gram negative and therefore stains red or pink in gram staining, and this is due to the thin peptidoglycan wall. And the reason why we have specifically two Haemophilus influenza creatures in the scene is to differentiate the two primary categories of Haemophilus influenza. The non-typable strains, i.e. those that do not produce a capsule, represented by this creature over here that doesn't have a capsule around him. And by the way, these strains are part of the normal upper respiratory tract flora and can cause acute otitis media and sinusitis, as we'll see soon. And then there is what we would call the more dangerous strain, Haemophilus influenza type B represented by the way by the bee that was on top of this guy over here and this strain produces a capsule a PRP capsule which protects the bacterium against phagocytosis and complement mediated lysis Haemophilus influenza type B as we said is very dangerous and can cause diseases such as meningitis and epiglottitis but due to the advent of the vaccine invasive HIV disease is pretty rare this HIV vaccine is administered beginning at age 2 months as part of DTaP with tetanus and diphtheria. And without this vaccination, Haemophilus influenza type B can cause invasive disease. And so in our scene over here, we have an anti-vaxxer, a guy who despises vaccinations. Perhaps he thinks that vaccinations cause autism or something. And he is so against vaccines that he went up to this billboard over here and spray painted the word don't. Don't get your Haemophilus influenza vaccine today. And it's for this reason, by the way, that this man over here is known as the influencer, Phyllis the influencer. This, by the way, is how I anchored us to this scene over here of Haemophilus influenza as the pathogens break into the home of Phyllis the influencer. Home of Phyllis the influencer for Haemophilus influenza. Just a cute little connection, but you don't really need it. Anyway, the pathogens broke into the home. The side in which the uncapsulated pathogen was on represents diseases caused by those non-typable strains, and as we mentioned, these included otitis media and sinusitis, whereas the diseases caused by HIV, the encapsulated strain, is represented on this side, where we see the sickly brain, perhaps even on fire, representing meningitis, as well as the thumbprint sign on top of this tripod, representing epiglottitis. The reason why it's on top of a tripod is because children who present with epiglottitis often show up in the tripod position on the floor in order to optimize their breathing. This epiglottitis is characterized by an epiglottis swelling causing an inspiratory strider, dyspnea, and severe agitation. And by the way, we've also included treatments on the wall over here. Treatment for the non-typable forms generally include penicillins. And for the encapsulated strains, ceftriaxone is often used, represented by the triax over here. Now, just to finish off with some shared features of Haemophilus influenza strains. So again, they broke into this home over here. In the back of the home, you may have noticed the cat and the ox, to represent catalase positive and oxidase positive, which we don't really speak about so much with respect to Haemophilus influenza, but in case it comes up, you'll know that Haemophilus influenza is catalase positive and oxidase positive. And in terms of the chocolate that I saw in the home, this represents the chocolate agar, which can grow Haemophilus influenza as sheep blood agar does not allow Haemophilus growth due to insufficient nutrients. It needs both factor 5, NAD+, and factor 10, hematin, for growth. And that was represented by the hive, for 5, factor 5, and the hen, factor 10. I guess this was part of the chocolate design. This hive and this hen over here is edible. Delicious. But anyway, Haemophilus influenza requires factor 5 and factor 10 for growth. By the way, it could be that Haemophilus could grow on sheep blood agar, and that can be achieved by cross-streaking with the medium of Staph aureus. Haemophilus influenza colonies will grow around the streaks of beta-hemolytic Staph aureus because these Staph aureus species actively secrete factor 5 into the medium and facilitate release of additional factor 10 from the beta-hemolysis-induced red blood cell lysis. And finally, over here we see in the A, there is this knife. Perhaps this knife is used to cut 
the chocolate, and over here it's in the A. This reminds us of the IgA protease. Certain bacteria, such as Haemophilus influenza, as well as Neisseria and Streptomonia, produce IgA proteases that cleave IgA at its hinge region, and this facilitates bacterial adherence to mucosal surfaces. Alright, so that's basically it for Haemophilus influenza. In summary, Haemophilus influenza is a gram-negative coxobacillus that has two primary categories, the non-typable strains, which has no vaccine associated with it, and the encapsulated HIV form, which is worse and can cause meningitis and epiglottitis. All Haemophilus influenza strains are catalase positive, oxidase positive, and require factor V and factor X for growth, and another characteristic is that they produce an IgA protease. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this scene on Haemophilus influenza. Take care.